Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakis, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Friday, in the week of the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, Proper 16. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 28th chapter, beginning at the first verse. After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it had begun to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us around it. Paul had gathered a bundle of brushwood and was putting it on the fire when a viper, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, this man must be a murderer, though he has escaped from the sea. Justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were expecting him to swell up or drop dead. But after they had waited a long time and saw that nothing unusual had happened to him, they changed their minds and began to say that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the leading man of the island, named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It so happened that the father of Publius lay sick in bed with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. After this happened, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They bestowed many honors on us, and when we were about to sail, they put on board all the provisions we needed. Three months later, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers, its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there for three days. Then we weighed anchor and came to Rhegium. After one day, there a south wind sprung up, and on the second day, we went to Puteola, there we found believers and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. The believers from there, when they heard of us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Here ends the lesson. There are two very important messages to all Christians in this lesson. We should never judge other people. That is the role that God has delegated to Jesus alone. As Jesus warned in John 8, You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true. For it is not I alone that judge, but I and the one who sent me. The natives initially judged Paul according to the flesh to be a murderer because the viper from the fire bit him. Do you know those who do that at times? They know someone who has had some unfortunate circumstances in their life and decide that they somehow know all that happened only to find that they have come to a wrong conclusion sometime later. We read in Matthew 7 verses 1 and 2, Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. The other lesson is that Christians extend hospitality. The fact that we are all one in the body of Christ gives us an instant community. Father Tom and I have been privileged to travel through short-term mission travels to Egypt, Malawi, Africa, and Brazil. While we may have known one or two people when we went, we always left a community of people whom we have grown to love. 
who showed us hospitality and have grown to love us. These relationships are special blessings that could only come by opening our hearts and lives to others as they have done for us. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't have to travel to support our brothers and sisters in Christ and show hospitality. Everywhere that Paul went in his travels, the community of believers supported him. Many of those communities were established by Paul. This is our call as Christians. Jesus said in the 34th verse of the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays, 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings, or 12.15 on Wednesdays, which includes anointing for healing. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.